Oh, my name is Peter Graham, and I'm born in Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. I've been drawing since I could hold a pen or pencil in my hand. Oh, as long as I can remember, I've been probably the first skill I picked up even before writing. Why? I enjoyed it. It's something that brought me joy. Uh, it's something that I would just do. Uh, like, you know how children just do things that make them happy. They don't really think about why. Like, taking out a piece of paper and drawing things on it made me happy. I was surprised to find out that I was good at it when I was told by my first grade teacher. I started it because I enjoyed doing it. It's something that I liked. I didn't really get into, like, sports or things of that nature that boys traditionally get into. Currently, the majority of my stuff is on Instagram, Instagram slash Etherspark. Also reachable on Facebook is it is also where you can reach me for commissions. My mother was very supportive. She knew I was artistic and she always encouraged me to uh, pursue art as a hobby. My first grade teacher uh, is the first person I ever remember telling me that I was genuinely a good artist. It's, it's a moment that still sticks in my head today as sort of like a formative moment of when I was like, oh, I'm like actually good about, like I'm actually good at this, like this is something I should do. She was upset with me because I was drawing in class. And then she saw the drawing that I was doing and she pulled me aside and of course scolded me for drawing in class and not paying attention. But she afterwards, when all the students had gone out to lunch, she said, like, I just want to talk to you about the drawing and let you know that uh, there are certain things that you can do with your lines that, that other kids haven't grasped yet. And that makes me think that you have potential to be a really great artist. When I look at your pictures that you draw, I can see movement. There is movement in what you're doing. And that is not something everyone can achieve. Uh, like a lot of other people, when they draw the uh, uh, what they're drawing, it looks stiff, it looks unrealistic. You, it's not necessarily that it's realistic because there's still stick figures, but there's movement here and, and there's life. You really should focus on this and, and get better at it. I think that you could be really good. And you know, I, I did. Thank you, Mrs. Elias. <laughs> Dedication, repetition, being okay with fucking up, being okay with drawing lots of bad things before you draw the one good thing, being okay with trying new mediums, uh, being okay with experimenting with your style. There's so many, <laughs> there are so many. You have to be moldable uh, and you have to be willing to mold yourself. Being okay with being uncomfortable with your art, taking time to try new things and maybe not always doing them well and, and keep practicing them until you do them well. That's the less pretty part about being an artist. So I would say the biggest misconception of art that I've experienced is it's not a valid career path or that it is not an attainable career path. It's hard, especially if you haven't gone to a school for it, which I haven't. I'm self-taught. You can, you can build a business for yourself with your art and be relatively successful at it. Maybe not like extremely quickly, but if you're good and people like what you do and you have your market, you can make money at what you're doing and do so on a fairly steady basis, especially with the advent of things like Patreon and Kickstarter. There are so many ways for artists today to be self-employed and stable. And the reason I'm saying that as my misconception is because it's, it's the misconception that my mother had. Previously, she was very into encouraging me to pursue this as a hobby, but was very against me pursuing this as a career. It's actually something she apologized to me right before she passed. She was like, I'm sorry that I didn't let you pursue this sooner. Biggest misconception is that it's not a valid career path or it's not an attainable career path for kids and adults. If your child is an artist, encourage them, support them, find out what they need to get their art seen by the right people and they will be okay. Best artistic moment. One of my favorite things to do artistically, stuff for theater. So I did, I, I used to do a lot of theater post, uh, a lot of theater posters for off-Broadway and regional productions in New York City. Some of those, like I still have some of them printed. They're just like, you know, fun things that I really enjoy. Getting my art recognized by a famous drag queen. <laughs> Um, so I've done a, a fair bit of art for some drag queens in New York City nightlife. Some of them have gone on to be on programs such as RuPaul's Drag Race. And some of those queens have used said art on their merch because I, I gifted them this art. Like, you know, I did this art as sort of fan art for them that I wanted them to have. To sometimes see my art on like a t-shirt and know that I did that is, is, is kind of cool. 
you know, it's kind of cool. It's it's a cool moment. And then to have that art recognized, further recognized by like a drag queen on like Instagram that is, you know, famous in their own circle, uh, famous in our own circle because drag queens are part of queer culture. To have like a little bit of that recognition within my own culture is really cool. A worst moment. Artist block is always hard. Kind of something you just have to work through. It's, it's just a reality of being a prolific artist. Like if you are constantly creating, there's gonna be a point where you say, well, what do I do now? It's, it's always gonna happen and you really just have to push through it. There's no other way than to just push through it. Rough moment for me was, like I said, I've, I've, I've done a lot of art for New York Nightlife uh, drag queens. So uh, one of the worst moments, there was a point where I w where there wasn't really a lot of people doing this sort of like fan art for drag queens. I've done a lot of work for drag queens in New York City Nightlife and like a fair bit of art for, for many of them because I, I, I know them out of costume and in person, not just people I see perform on a stage. And you know, sometimes when there's an emotional connection, art just like naturally happens and it's nice when that happens like you gift it to people. Uh, this was before the point that I realized my art was marketable and I could sell it. So I was giving these queens art for free that I probably should have been charging them for. That's okay though. Like I was happy to give it because like I wanted them to have it because it was beautiful images of them, of how I see them. What I didn't like is there were some other opportunistic artists who kind of came along and made a business out of that and sort of swooped in and scooped up my entire customer base before I could even form it. Um, so that was a rough moment. <laughs> that was a rough moment and a, a learning experience, a, a teachable moment for me as an artist. Art is art and as artists in many ways we're taught to believe that art is for everyone. So there's this idea that it should be free. Um, no, no, uh, because you have to make a living. Your art is worth money because your art is representative of time and passion that you have put into it. And you deserve to be compensated for that work. And that is a very rough moment that taught me that lesson. And it is why I no longer do art for free, no matter how much I love you. <laughs> like, pay me. Emotion. Art is emotion given form. It's emotion, it's ideas, it's politics. Anything that is important to said artist uh, given form. Whether that form be dance, visual arts, painting, singing, art is passion given form. My name is Peter. Thank you for watching Dreambird. See you later.